So my name is Dr. Kayer Shaw. I'm a heart failure and transplant cardiologist at Virginia Commonwealth University here in Richmond, Virginia. I'm the chief of heart failure and I have a focus on cardiac amyloidosis. I've been seeing and treating amyloid patients for nearly 15 years and have enjoyed the evolution, revolution in therapies and diagnostic modalities that has occurred. And I'm happy to be here to share my thoughts and hopefully um, move the field forward. I'd start by saying it's not so much a rare disease. It's more of a common rare disease. So ATTR amyloidosis is a type of amyloidosis that arises from the transthyretin protein. And as I tell many of my patients, amyloidosis is sort of a family of diseases related to proteins and the misfolding of proteins. In TTR or ATTR amyloidosis, the transthyretin protein that's synthesized in the liver and known to all of us as prealbumin for some reason, either because of aging and wild type TTR or a mutation in hereditary TTR becomes unstable and the arms of the protein of the separate, misfold and refold into fibrils and then eventually this amorphous deposit called amyloid. When I think about transthyretin amyloidosis, there are really two major groups of disease. One is wild type TTR amyloid, which is basically an unmutated form where patients as they age, especially reach their eighth or ninth decade of life, start developing deposits in their heart. Years before that, they may have deposits of amyloid in their joints, on their nerves, causing neuropathies, arthropathies, tendon ruptures. And as it invades the heart, it starts causing heart failure, arrhythmias. That's when they kind of come into our clinical sphere. In hereditary TTR amyloidosis here, especially in the United States, it's predominantly a disease of Black Americans. There's a mutation that translocated during the slave trade to the United States and Caribbean islands called the V142I mutation. This presents as a similar phenotype as wild-type amyloid as causing cardiomyopathy, arrhythmias, conduction disease, arthropathies, carpal tunnel syndrome, but predominantly affects blacks. The disease presents itself as a, at an earlier age also than wild-type, usually in patients' 60s or 70s, and is devastating. Both diseases are progressive without treatment and lead to progressive heart failure, poor quality of life, and eventually death. The general management of patients with cardiac amyloidosis falls into two realms. The first is management of the symptoms and complications. And the second is identifying disease-modifying therapies that can either slow or halt the disease. So in the first group, we're really talking about general heart failure management, avoiding medications that could cause the patient to feel worse and addressing arrhythmias and conduction disease. But the second group is where the exciting developments are. In the last decade, the first treatment for TTR amyloid, a stabilizer called tefamidus was approved. And is up until recently, was the only FDA-approved treatment for amyloidosis. And as we know, recently, acaramidus was approved by the FDA, and both drugs are stabilizers. A stabilizer in TTR amyloidosis is a medication that maintains the tetramer conformation of the protein, preventing it from becoming dissociated and sort of transforming into amyloidosis. So acaramidus is really unique. It's a molecule that will stabilize the TTR protein by mimicking the bonds of a naturally occurring genetic mutation called the T119M mutation. And what this mutation and this drug do is it stabilizes the protein almost completely to prevent misfolding 
and formation of amyloidosis. And what was seen in the attribute cardiomyopathy trial was a reduction of key endpoints, such as pro-BNP levels, hospital readmissions, and eventually survival. Stabilization of the protein is a very important step to prevent disease progression. What we know is TTR amyloidosis patients who have no disease-modifying therapies have a progressive decline, a poorer quality of life, more hospital admissions for heart failure and other cardiovascular causes, and unfortunately, a sooner death. Using a stabilizer delays all of these and reduces the occurrence of these adverse outcomes compared to not using any stabilizing treatment. Pfizer's treatment uh, to Famitis or Vindaquil or Vindamax was approved several years ago as the first stabilizer for TTR amyloidosis. This is like the million dollar question is how to choose each which drug. And if you're asking anyone, the truth is the clinical trial has not yet been designed to compare if one is superior to the other. I think some of the interesting things that we have in the Acaramidus study, we have a contemporary cohort of patients that were diagnosed with the disease possibly earlier, and yet we still saw a treatment effect during the uh, follow-up periods. So I don't know if I can give you a, a, you know, a robust answer to that question. We are just uh, engaging, at least from a hospital and clinical perspective, with Bridge Bio and the other services to increase patient access to treatments. I am, and I think the community as a whole, was stunned but grateful with Bridge Bio's decision to continue supporting the patients we enrolled in the attribute trial with lifelong supplies of acaramidus. And I think this is a testament to the, the company's commitment to the field and really a recognition, uh, a, just, a, just a social awareness of the issues we've run into as clinicians and patients on access to therapies. So I certainly applaud and, and respect Bridge Bio for their commitment to the field and really a generous uh, gesture to all the patients who who, who offered their time and sacrifice to, to participate in Tribute. I think there were a number of key findings in Tribute that move the field forward. I think there's general enthusiasm for expanding the treatment profile and drugs available to patients with amyloidosis. But I think all together, uh, key findings in this clinical trial are we need to continue to push forward to increase awareness of the disease identified earlier and get these patients on treatment because it's been reinforced by the findings here that we can modify meaningful outcomes if we identify the disease and treat it before it gets into very severe forms.